Good afternoon. My name is Bill Shelton. I'm the CEO of the Future Citizens Foundation. I want to welcome everyone to our first FCS Town Hall with the CEO of 2020. Uh, we're very excited to start this series and see where it takes us. One of the most important parts of our efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic is to maintain communication with our stakeholders and to provide services to our participants where possible virtually uh, and hopefully soon uh, on campus. Uh, today, we want to give you updates on our three programs. These updates, along with any of your questions, will be made uh, uh, recorded, and we will use it also to uh, make this a very special town hall. All three programs are critical to our organization's top priority which is providing the best programs and services to help develop our youth of Monterey County. We will discuss how each program and our staff have been operating to stay in touch and provide programming through technology. Our heads of our departments for our programs, Jessica Baker, uh, Nick Nelson with the first T, uh, Jessica Baker, with Pay It Forward, uh, Gabriella Chavez with the Taylor Farm Center for Learning will give brief updates on this and we will answer questions that you may have between each summary. Uh, our next SCF Town Hall with the CEO is next Thursday, May 28th at 3 p.m. And we will be discussing all the different college scholarships that we have to offer and how youth can best prepare themselves to receive one. Um, I now will turn it over to Jessica Baker, our director of our Pay It Forward program at CSUMB. Hi. Um, so just a little update about us, including the recent survey since March, we've been in frequent communication with our current Pay It Forward scholars. Um, ensuring that they know about and also access the resources that are available to them and their families. Many have shared with us the mental, emotional, and financial impacts that they have experienced during this time. Since the entire CSU system is going virtual next semester, we'll be, we're going to be working on increased supports and also additional resources to ensure their success. With regard to our incoming freshmen, this year we raised $300,000 and awarded 15 scholarships for the class entering CSUMB this fall. Our goal was to fund 20 new Pay It Forward scholars this year, so we are seeking and hoping for additional dollars to come in in June and July so that we can fund those students that are currently on our waiting list and also meet that goal. We had 178 nominations for our program this year, so there were many extraordinary and deserving candidates, and our scholarship selection committee did a great job managing the interviews virtually and making tough decisions about our finalists. Um, as you can see on the slide, they are coming to us, those freshmen are coming to us from many different areas of Monterey County, including Gonzales, Greenfield, King City, North Monterey County, Marina, and Salinas. We're in the process of confirming a mentor for each of those scholars, and so far we have eight of the 15 needed. Um, in looking at what's next, our scholars have been clear that they prefer in-person activities wherever possible and, of course, safe. They want the connection, interaction, camaraderie, and support that comes with being together in community. CSUMB has committed to an in-person commencement ceremony for the recent graduates that had to miss their commencement, and of course, when they're able to safely conduct it. And we hope to provide in-person activities wherever and whenever possible. Um, if not, we'll be sure to provide robust and meaningful virtual alternatives. In the face of this uncertain future, we're going to plan accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. I um, appreciate the update uh, that you have given us. Um, now we'll take some of the questions that were generated concerning uh, the Pay It Forward program uh, that we have um, coming through emails and through chat. So. I'll turn it over to Jacob so that he can ask some of the questions of you uh, that are coming across. So the first question that we have here is, does my child need to attend CSUMB to receive the Pay it Forward Scholarship, as well as how much money do they get each year? 
Great. Um, those are really good questions. Um, yes, it, in order to be a part of Pay It Forward, the student needs to attend CSUMB. That's because the program actually started and was initiated um, as a local program for local students, ensuring that you know Monterey County residents um, support the local college. And so, yes, you have to go to CSUMB. And then the students are given five thousand dollars a year. How we how we distribute it is actually five hundred dollars a month um, for ten months out of the year while the program is in session. Second question for Pay It Forward. How do we get a mentor for my child? What if I have a child that's a mentee and they haven't met their mentor since the quarantine? When will they be able to meet again? Yeah, that is a great question. Our students um, are very much missing their mentees and I know the mentees feel the same. Um, so we're working, we're actually working right now on how to do something virtually. Um, we were concerned about how to, you know, manage that uh, liability wise and for a lot of other reasons. And so we're, we're working on that. We're actually meeting um, as a team, oh, I think next week to discuss that. So hopefully soon. And we encourage them um, to maintain contact over the phone. So, so we, we highly encourage phone contact. Jacob, Anything do you have any more questions? <laughs> yeah, that was the That's last it. question for Pay It Forward. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica. Um, and you can always email her or you can email me. Uh, with additional questions, or if you have questions for us later, we'll have a, a, a short slot open and available for people to submit some more questions later about any topic uh, outside of the three programs, and we'll try to address those too. Um, I'll let Nick Nelson, our director of the First T, uh, now present his information and then answer questions immediately following. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Nick Nelson, Executive Director for the First Year of Monterey County. Uh, so glad you could join us today. Um, we did get some questions in prior to the uh, the meeting, and um, and so I wanted to really just to sort of kick off um, answering those questions first of all. The um, one of the questions came up about how are the staff doing? How have they been impacted by this stay-at-home order? Well, I'm pleased to report that. Uh, all of us, including myself, have learned some uh, great new skills. Um, the skills seem to fall under the categories of the of the life skills that we work with all the children on, and that would be interpersonal communication skills, goal setting, resilience skills, and self management skills. The um, they've also, uh, which, which I'll get into a little bit deeper, um, have have made some incredible relationships with our community. Um, not just children, but parents, teachers, suppliers, even donors through this time, through a, a mass communication program that we've been conducting. So the staff are doing well. Um, we've, we've given um, everybody a certain um, an, an ample uh, amount of time, which we're very proud of. And uh, getting a little bit more deeper into have the staff been able to impact people's lives during the past 10 weeks? So this is what we're all about. This is our mission. And uh, I'd say a resounding yes. We uh, began a, a program uh, nine weeks ago now. Can you believe it? We called it Operation Touch Everybody. And uh, and this was a, a, a just a, a huge undertaking. And we uh, we trained the staff how to um, make uh, basically uh, contact people through the phone, sort of like, almost like telemarketing. Uh, to establish new friendships, new relationships. They've done an outstanding and fantastic job of that. In fact, yesterday we marked a, a milestone in um, OTE, and we have made over 10,000 calls to community members throughout Monterey County. It's quite a, a, an unbelievable feat. We've also been conducting uh, virtual programming, where for nine weeks we conducted Facebook Live classes every day, Monday to Friday at four o'clock, which is our usual after school programming time. Those were those again went fantastically. We we had reached up to a, a thousand views with some of the videos. Um, a couple of coaches have also 
worked and reached out to uh, many participants, and they're also conducting um, live classes with small groups online. They've used various platforms, including Google Hangouts, um, uh, Teams, and uh, Google Meet. And then we also still didn't forget our valuable volunteers, even though they're not able to uh, impact children's lives personally and, and with uh, a direct contact anymore. We were able to still recognize them uh, during National Volunteer Week with our uh, Flipgrid videos. This is a new platform that we discovered, and uh, our staff um, took various videos and, and just thanking and appreciating the volunteers. And, and we got some marvelous comments back from all the volunteers. So we're, we're, we're keeping in touch with everybody. And so we've looked at really sort of the past. Well, let's look at, uh, at the future now. So what are you going to do for the next 10 weeks? And, uh, and our, our, our most exclamation point is going to be summer camp. Um, I, we, we're going to be able to produce sort of a, a hybrid type of summer camp this year. Obviously, it won't be the same. You can see the little photograph up there with all the youngsters, you know, being nice and close and, um, you know, sharing their, their fun Western day there. Um, so we've had to work very hard to revise the program. And, uh, and it will be provided in person and also with some distance learning. We're still starting to uh, plan to start on uh, Monday, June the 8th, which was the original day of summer camp. The, the final details will be releasing next week, uh, but we're really looking forward to having a wonderful time. And obviously, you know, still adhering to all the state's uh, safe and health, uh, safety and health rules. Thank you, Nick. Um, Jacob, I think you have some questions for Nick. I, I know I got a few that actually came through my phone I don't know how that happened, but a person sent me a question through my phone uh, about, um, about, uh, and I'm going to ask this if you don't mind. Uh, it says, uh, can a kid get virtual golf lessons uh, during this, you know, period until we uh, get campus back open? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, we've, as I said, for the last nine weeks, we've conducted a, a Facebook Live classes. We conduct them at many different areas of the uh, like uh, the clubhouse and the teen center, even my office. And uh, and so we showed that it was possible to play some golf and, and practice and, and sharpen your skills inside. And, uh, and then we also conducted some outside. So, you know, we're assuming that, that uh, some of the children have got some backyards where they get out and swing. I believe Coach Tim set up a sheet between a doorway and was hitting almost full shots. Not, not, not really recommended at home, but uh, it is possible, and um, we, we've also conducted these uh, smaller classes uh, where they're interactive, they're live and interactive, and so the coaches will uh, meet with the participants. Uh, we've had small groups of between five and ten participants and one coach, and uh, and the coach has a lesson plan, still delivers the same curriculum, the golf and life skills experience, and uh, to make it interactive, he's asked them to. Uh, participate in certain things. They'll say, "Okay, what I want you to do now is to is to go outside and do uh, one minute of warm up exercises." So they'll they'll come back in if they've got their phone, they take the phone with them. And they'll come back in and they'll share that experience. Then they'll, he'll say, "Okay, now next thing we're, we're going to go outside and uh, practice a couple of pitching swings." So yes, we've been able to do that with regards to um, sort of fine tuning, you know, individual uh, sort of golf lessons. That's something that we're definitely looking forward to. Uh, being able to conduct a camp. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Jacob, I know you're getting questions. I'm still getting questions sent through the through my <laughs> phone by text from some people. Uh, and I know that we can also people can also ask questions in the question section uh, of your of the, of the chat part. If they look at the inner side of the chat, they can ask questions in the questions part of that. Jacob, I'll let you ask some of the questions I've seen roll across the screen actually on in our chat section, check section. One of the first questions that we have is, when will summer camp start and what does it look like? Great, excellent. We are uh, anticipating opening uh, as, as you know, scheduled at the beginning of the year on Monday, June the 8th. And um, it is gonna be different, uh, obviously. Um, we will, we anticipate that, you know, the, um, all the, the shelter in place and the, Health and safety rules will still be in place, you know, within a couple of weeks from now. So we'll be checking temperatures when children come in. 
obviously one of the big concerns, the biggest concern is the health and safety of the staff and the participants. So, uh, you know, masks will be required. We will have participants join in small groups and um, uh, with one coach, they'll rotate to different stations throughout the day in that one group. They won't be switching and jumping groups. So there won't be any, you know, crisscross interaction uh, with other groups when they go inside. Um, you know, obviously the mask will have to come on again. And um, we've got four rooms at the Center for Learning set up and we'll have a, a remote teacher in the office so they will be delivering the um, virtual uh, STEM and indoor classes. And again, so there won't be any interaction um, uh, with anybody outside of their small groups. And, um, and then they'll continue on through the day. We also are anticipating having, um, you know, uh, virtual classes available as well. So, um, you know, having a live feed going from the golf course into people's homes where um, participants can, can interact online as well. Obviously, then you know, the staff will have a big undertaking at the end of every day and cleaning everything down. Every child will be uh, issued golf clubs if they don't have their own, so there won't be any changing of golf clubs or sharing of golf clubs. And um, likewise, when it comes down to eating as well, there won't be any um, you know, sharing of any food or, or water bottles as such. Another question that we have uh, regarding summer camp is, will there still be field trips this summer during camp? and what kind of scholarship or internship opportunities are available? These are great questions. I, I love our, uh, our, all of our people. Um, un unfortunately, there won't be any field trips this year. Um, we just can't see how we could, you know, take a, a, a group of participants in, you know, one of the vans to one of the off-site places. I think we're just increasing the chances for, for you know, um, getting sick. Um, certainly the van isn't big enough to have everybody six feet away from each other. So the field trips will be on hold for this year, unless anything, you know, was to change. We, we respond pretty quickly to, uh, to change. And, um, and so, you know, if, if it means during the middle of, of the eight week, uh, series that we have lined up for summer camp, that, that the shelter in place rules and regulations change, then, then we will change too. So that's, so I, I won't say no, we're not going to do it for eight weeks, but we're, we're not having, we're not planning it until you know we're in a position to do so. Um, Jacob, could you repeat the end of the last question? What kind of scholarship or internship opportunities are available? Excellent, great. Yeah, we uh, we always offer um, uh, scholarships to summer camp. We'll continue to offer them again this year. And if um, if anybody uh, needs help in that area all they need to do is to contact us and um, uh, speak with Nayeli and it, or any of the reg team and we'll be able to take care of that internships um, we're not hiring any new staff uh, for the program um, but we and and with regards to junior coaches that we've had in the past helping out and assisting um, again that's something which we're, we're going to take on a one-by-one -one basis Another question we have here, are there any skills trainings available? And can my child borrow golf clubs to practice at home? Okay, absolutely. We've, in fact, we've, uh, we've, we've been giving out golf clubs, um, you know, throughout the last nine weeks. Uh, we do it contactless uh, exchange. So um, all we need to do is set up an appointment. We have been sending uh, a couple of staff members to the campus, um, you know, throughout the week to um, meet with the parents. And so the, the parents, will, the doors are locked, but we set a certain time, um, we'll open up the gates, you can drive into the roundabout and um, the staff member will bring the clubs out and put them in the trunk for you, you can stay in the car and um, and then take them home. So yes, we've been doing that and, and we'd love to, we've got plenty of golf clubs to, to, to give away through you know many generous donors um, throughout the county. So we're looking, uh, I say, if you need some more, that, that will be great. I'm I'm talking so much I'm forgetting the last part of the questions. What was the other part of that? I think you covered it, Nick. Oh, you answered both. Answered them both. I, and the only reason why I say that is because I see another question popping up. And and what uh, I want to do is is pause and save a few minutes at the end to go back to some of these questions that are popping up now. Uh, I got a pay it forward question that's popped up too. 
And I'm going to let Gabriella come on and talk a little bit about the Taylor Farm Center for Learning. Then we're going to double back and finish off the questions and just we'll take the questions as, as long as we need to. We'll run a little bit over uh, with the town hall and answer the questions at the end because we, we're getting a, a good uh, slot of questions. And, um, and um, we want to be uh, cognizant of everybody's time. And, and therefore, we'll let Gabriella speak and then we'll go back and answer the rest of these questions at the end. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. So in respect of time, I'll be uh, brief, but a couple of things that we've been doing with the, the Taylor Farm Center for Learning is we've been filming a virtual experience every about every week that combines the golf and life skills component, a lesson, and a STEM component. So for the first week we focused, the first two weeks we focused on digital opportunities through Scratch and through uh, Pivot, which is a stop motion animation. Those videos can be found on YouTube in case you didn't catch them, they're, they're available there and we're hoping that those will be available throughout the year. Um, in addition to that, we've also been part of the Operation Touch Everyone with the First Tee of Monterey County. Uh, we have one staff member working with us at this moment and she's been able to do over 500 calls during these eight weeks supporting Operation Touch Everyone and reaching out, making sure that our participants and our families know that we're here for them. And as we think about looking for, you know, as we're moving forward, in addition to being part of summer camp and being part of the hybrid component of, of summer camp, we are looking at ways that we can still engage with some of our other pillars, you know, with STEAM, with academia, and possibly providing some literacy and some summer slide reading challenges. Uh, one of the things that we're really excited about is sharing with you all is class craft quests. These are self-paced um, quests that people can be involved in, which allow um, students to do a, a myriad of things, whether it's we can challenge and say you read 30, 30 minutes a day and then they pass that challenge. And, um, or they can also be part of something um, like physical activity. These will be quests that we'll be um, inviting you all. If you're interested as a parent, I encourage you on the questions to write your name and we will go ahead and invite you when our quests are, are begin. And um, what we found with Classcraft, if, you, if you've been to summer camp or winter camp, or your children have been to summer camp and winter camp, we find it's a really great app online that they really enjoy. They get to create their avatar, have a fun time, and um, then they get to battle. So we're really excited about being able to offer that digitally um, and virtually uh, to our participants. And just briefly, uh, before I leave, I do want to share a couple of things that we've done through marketing um, and encourage you to follow us on social media. We've been, um, as, as Nick mentioned, we've been using our social media platforms to provide virtual classes and to promote our, um, our virtual experiences. We've put a list of resources available on our website. So if you haven't been to our website, we encourage you to visit. We have several, um, links and uh, materials available that you can use at home if you aren't able to, to join us in our virtual classes. And then finally, we have been sending some uh, mailers and infographics about our programs and, um, and events, including ZGALS, um, the Center for Learning, Pay It Forward, and the First T. If you haven't received them and are interested in receiving them, please uh, go ahead and put your email in, your, in our questions portal and we'll make sure to, to have you um, receive those in the future or make sure that those are available to you. So those are all, that's my update uh, for the Center for Learning and for Marketing. Does anybody have any questions? Jacob? There are a few questions that came in that would be uh, for the group. So we'll share those afterwards. I'm gonna skip to ones that are just Center for Learning now. So the first one that we have are, will there still be homework help? And can my child borrow a tablet if we don't have computers at home? We do want to make available homework help right now for the rest of the month. Mondays and Wednesdays, we will have a Google Meet available. It's a drop-in. If you come on over, uh, we can ask help. If you need something more specific, you're welcome to email myself, and I'll make sure that that email is uh, included in our handouts, and we can try to schedule something. But at the moment, what we're doing is we're providing a drop-in 
meeting room through Google Google Meet. And in, with regards to the tablets, at this moment, we don't have the security measures to, to make that available, but we'd be happy to refer you to programs like um, Los Fishes and Computers to be able to ensure that you have access to a computer or a tablet at low cost. Another question that we have is, have you been partnering with any other community partners? We, uh, we've been in discussion with Junior Achievement and actually Junior Achievement has a wonderful breadth of support services and activities for students if you're, if you're interested in having your child take part of some after, some financial education and citizen education. And you can go to our website and they're one of our, our three links when you go to um, resources, you'll, you'll see them there and there's several activities. So we are, we are encouraging um, those you know, families to, to check them out. We also were um, able to deliver some STEM and, and materials kits to the Alice L Family Resource Center. In collaboration with the First Tee, we provided some um, materials for the food bank, for their food delivery at the beginning of, of, the, of the pandemic. And at that time, we, we did provide some STEM kits and some activities for, for families. Another question that came in, does it cost to go to after school program? It is part of your membership at this time. So if you are a member of the first T, you are able to be a member of the after school program at both the Center for Learning and after school for the first T. And if you are a, an Alice L Union School District, you are a member and so you would be eligible. Another question that we have is, are there opportunities for volunteers to help right now? And what number do I call to speak to someone at the Center for Learning? Yes, there are opportunities. One of the ways that we are engaging, and if you are interested in art or STEM and you'd like to help us out, is we are we're wanting to make some make available to our students videos like the virtual experiences. So if you have a if you're interested in STEM and you want to participate in that way and support us in some of our virtual classes, that would be wonderful. Um, and Moving forward, as we get closer to our hybrid summer camp, I am confident that there will be opportunities um, to support the programs. And was the, last question? Question, the last question was the phone number, which I can go ahead and answer. Thank and you. I'll be glad to answer any questions. If you guys would like to contact the Center for Learning, it is 831-998-0924. Thank you, Gabriella. Uh, we're at this time. Uh, we're going to double back and take some of the questions that came in for the different department heads after they had finished the summary of their updates. That of their updates. Uh, and so, if we can go back now and um, circle back, and Jacob, if you could pull some of the questions. I have a couple on my phone that came in, but if you could pull a couple of the questions uh, that came in after uh, Jessica had finished and after Nick had finished. One of the questions that we received is, when will camp registration be open? And and Nick, if you would like to double back on um, the volunteer question of how they can help now. Sure. Um, uh, camp registration actually is uh, available now. Um, all we have to do is um, give us a call, 831-444-7200. And um, we, we do have the phones all forwarded to our staff, so um, you will get a, a you know an immediate response. Um, with with regards to volunteering opportunities right now, um, there 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 are no in-person opportunities to volunteer with participants right now today. However. Uh, you know, when summer camp begins, um, that's, you know, that will all change. Um, so if uh, if you could contact us either through uh, email or, or or give us a call, um, we'll be able to find out what days uh, you're available to, to help. And uh, and if you are willing, we'd love to have you come and help at summer camp, which will be beginning on uh, June 8th. 
Another question that we received is, do you have programming for teens? Yes. Yes, every uh, th throughout the year uh, during after school programming, we always have uh, teen classes available. And then uh, again, this is all um, you know before the shutdown. Uh, we have the teen day on Sunday. The teen center is op was open um, seven days a week. As we look forward to summer camp, um, there is going to be the traditional teen element in summer camp, as has been for the last few years. So uh, the teens will sign up just the same as uh, um, you know, elementary and middle school children. And then they, when they arrive, they will be put into their own groups and have their own rotations. Um, you know, we, we've discovered the last few years that it, it works a lot better for uh, the teens when they're in um, uh, groups of, of children their same age. So the answer is yes. I have a question, uh, Jacob, on my on my phone. Um, it is asking how do people become mentors for the Pay It Forward program, the First T, and Taylor Farm Center for Learning. Um, I can speak to uh, Pay It Forward, and it's our website is the place to go for all things <laughs> related to all of our programs. So if you go to our FCF website, which is fcf-ca.org, and then forward slash PIF for Pay It Forward, or just go to you know where our programs is and click straight to Pay It Forward. Um, at the bottom of that page, there's a little box that says Get Involved, and you can click. Uh, the link to become a mentor and it'll send you fill out a quick form and it'll send it to me and then I'll be in touch. You can also nominate a scholar. Um, so if you know a high school student uh, for next year, you could nominate a scholar and you could also fund a scholarship, any of those ways to get involved. But being a mentor is the first link and we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Okay, I think I see why I'm getting emails because I see that she put my email up on the, on the uh, screen and I see that now that's probably why I'm getting emails. Uh, quick question on email. Um, becoming a mentor, how's the background check done? Or is it needed? I guess that's part of the question. Um, for Oh, for Pay It Forward, um, we don't do a, a background check. These are adults working with adults. So all of our students are um, 18. So we don't do a background check. And actually, this year, for the first time, we have a student who um, is 16, so we will be performing a background check on that one mentor who will be working with them because it, that person is under 18. Nick? Yes. Same question. That question was asked to all the program department heads. I should have said that. I'm, I'm sorry, you'll have to repeat the question. Is, is is a background check, you know, how does the background check work for the first T? And I always say Taylor Farm Center for Learning, but they said the STEM program, which is the Taylor Farm Center for Learning. But uh, they said, how does the background check work for Pay It Forward, the STEM program, and the first T? Sure. Yeah, so all uh, volunteers and staff who work with young people have to go through a background check. Uh, the background check is conducted locally um, it, it, at the, uh, it's funny enough, just around the corner from the golf course at the UPS store. It's a live scan. It's called live scan where they, uh, they take fingerprints and, um, you know, and do a, a, an FBI background check. Um, so that has to come through uh, positive, obviously, before you can work with the children. And then there's some training that has to occur prior to that. Now, under the current um, you know, restrictions of, uh, and children in place, um, I, I can't answer how we would do that just yet. Um, I, but I can find out, um, call the, uh, the live scan place and, and find out how they're doing that. And the, and the, the, the um, requirements were, are the same for the Center for Learning and for the first team. Thank you. I'll just add one more thing because I realized also our scholars serve as mentors for young people. So all of our scholars are background checked before they work one on one with any student. Just want to make sure that that people knew that. Thank you. Uh, the the other email I just got in was about how does the different scholarship programs work? 
Um, I, I'm, the reason why I'm pausing on that one is because next week we're going to get into scholarships. Uh, we're going to talk more detail. You give more details and talk more in detail about that um, because we have we we have paid forward is our flagship scholarship program, but we have some other scholarship programs too, and we'll have more time to to really specifically talk about those scholarship programs and how a young person can apply for one, how they can get involved to position themselves for one. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about that next week, but yeah, we, we do have a variety of scholarships uh, for college uh, that are available through the Future Citizens Foundation and our programs. So um, if, if we could just put a pin in that one until next week at three o'clock, uh, because all we, all we will be talking about basically, and we we'll always take general questions too, but the main focus will be on the scholarships that we offer young people for college. Are there we any other questions? Question. Yes, okay. we do have one more question here. Um, is how are you listed on social media under First Tee or under Taylor Farm Center for Learning? So I'm happy to answer that question. Um, we have uh, our organizational uh, handles, as you can see on our on on the slide up here. Um, you can find us as Future Citizens Foundation, um, FCF Monterey County through Facebook, uh, Future Citizens Foundation on Instagram, and Future Citizens underscore on Twitter. We also are developing some new program-specific handles, uh, which we're going to excitedly share once they are released. The one that we have at this moment now is the First T of Monterey Counties on Instagram. So they can be found at First T M C. We will be cross-posting and tagging through our handles. So we you know, encourage you to follow all of them, but at least um, know that we will make sure to cross-promote. Cross okay, we're wrapping up and you know our town halls last 45 minutes and we're approaching that 45 minute mark. Um, and Jacob, we'll take a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up and... Um, um, I'll close this out. The last question that we have here is how often will you host these webinars? We we have a series that we're going to do uh, of about five to eight. Uh, we're going to bring on community leaders uh, uh, like David Gill and uh, uh, leaders like Steve John from the Monterey Peninsula Foundation. Uh, you know, we're talking with Dale Curry, Steph Curry's dad, about coming on and talking about uh, golf and the impact that golf has made on he his family's life. So we're lining up some folks, but um, we are going to be bringing in local people as well as people outside of our community who are somehow connected to us. And uh, we'll be doing these for the next five to eight weeks, and we'll just see how it goes. It's uh, something, as you can tell. Uh, is new. This is our first attempt at this. And of course, with anything new, you got to work out the bugs. And we've got a number of bugs that we got to work out and transitions that we have to do from, you know, speaker to commentator to host to questions. But we're we're going to continue to do this over the next five weeks for sure. Um, and uh, we'll get better at it. And um, we'll be able to uh, bring more of the, of the ideals and thoughts from the community that they want to see us uh, talk about and bring on here too. So uh, we want this to be a part of our ongoing process uh, throughout the year. So uh, once we get back to some form of normalcy, we'll probably do these once a month. But um, under the COVID-19 era right now, um, uh, we're going to be doing these once a week on, on Thursdays at three o'clock. And uh, next week, uh, um, as I said before, we'll be talking about FCF and all of our scholarship programs headlined by the Pay It Forward program, the John Zoller Scholarship program, uh, the First T program, the AT&T scholarships that we have uh, through the Monterey Peninsula Foundation. So we, we have a number of scholarships that we can talk about and we'll be talking about those next week. Um, and um, we'll, we'll, our times are will be from 3 to 3.30, 3.45 is our cutoff. And uh, we look forward to being able to answer more questions and, and bring some of the subject matter 
that the community would like to talk about too. So continue to email us, give us your input, let us know what you would like to hear from us, uh, updates, the type of updates you wanna hear about programming, about what we're doing in the community, uh, subject matters that are relevant to the organization uh, from your standpoint as a participant or donor or volunteer. So um, we will continue to do these um, uh, for the next five to eight weeks. Okay, um, I think that'll be our last question for the day. We thank everybody for dropping in. Uh, we look forward to um, having a discussion around this on the 28th of next week uh, at three o'clock where we'll be talking about FCF scholarships and how they support uh, uh, the scholarship program, uh, how to get involved. And, and by the way, um, you can still donate to us at fcf.org uh, at our website. And uh, we are open for contributions. We have not closed our contribution doors. Um, and we look forward to, uh, you know, getting the support for our programs. Uh, the COVID-19 um, development has caused us to be able to have to spend more money on protective, uh, personal protective equipment for our staff members, for our participants, uh, once we get on campus. And so we're going to need a, a whole area of funding that we didn't even anticipate. And that looks like that could be anywhere from fifteen dollars to $30,000 just in personal protective equipment for our participants and for our staff. So yeah, we, we do need donations. Uh, we need donations for our programs. We need donations uh, to protect our young people and protect our staff uh, so we can get back outdoors and be prepared once uh, they loosen some of the guidelines up that we can have interaction. Uh, we are even looking at uh, trying to turn our campus into some pre-activity where families can come work out and, and be a part of um, a, a, a uh, informal program on our campus and use some of the acreage that we have to spread out and, and have some fun time. Uh, thank you. Um, we look forward to next Thursday. Uh, send us some of the topics that you would like to hear about, some of the areas concerning uh, our programming that you would like to learn about or that you would even like to discuss. And we'll look forward to next Thursday. And I'll uh, end it on that and thank you and see you next Thursday.